put himself back on the map after taking a year off, and let's kick it away. He'll take it from his own end zone. Oh, big hit. The ball is loose. It's scooped up by Jones, and what a way to start the ball game. Touchdown, Joel. G light. That uh, is insane. I need some, with some bop in it. Break it down, Joel. <laughs> Joel's always going to have some fun up there. And the crazy thing is, when I talked to Lockdown, Joel almost got knocked out of this online elimination tournament to be here because he fumbled in overtime on the kickoff against Lockdown to lose his first game. Looks like the fortunes has turned, and now Deliverance has to fight through the adversity. That is the worst possible way to start a to game of John like Madden big. football if you're Deliverance. Take a look at it one more time. This is Dante Hall, one of the best returners of all time, and the ball's loose. Just great use of there by Joel, though. He usered that player all the way down the field and lays the hit stick himself. Completely earned fumble. You know, I'm not saying that should happen every time, but just a great hit stick there by Joel, and that's why he forced that fumble. Well, we've heard of spotting people points, RG, but that is a quick seven. Six seconds in the ball game? That might be the quickest score we've ever seen. And Let's take a look at his playbook. He's going to be running out with that Raiders. Look at that body language of deliverance. So you look at these playbooks as well. I mean, that's got to be demoralizing. And I'm with Mo on this one, though. Your, your chances of getting a fumble are so much greater on the user hit stick. And oh. as you see, Joel was able to land one. There's his playbooks. And he's going to be in that Dolphins defense, Mo. Yeah, but, and, we, and I was kind of curious how Joel would play defense, and it's so much easier when you are able to force a fumble because he does have that escape bars and that jukebox, so he's spending a ton of cap on offense. Defense is a little bit depleted, so him able to force that turnover and get a score off it is huge. And I'm serious about that quickest score of all time. Because even if you, well, here uh -oh. we go, Pollard, open space. Spotted him seven points and he'll take it right back oh, for Joel, deliverance. That's about to be fun, Joel. I'm at to stop the Come run. On, baby. I'm at to stop the run. I had to get some fluke. I'm at to stop the run. Now, man. That's go. respect. I'm at to stop the run. And with the oh, PAT, we're so tied we up, play. gentlemen. See deliverance's body language perked up a little bit after that one. That's how you get yourself back in the ball game. And you don't want to, I don't like hearing that from Joel. He said, I'm not going to stop the run. Well, guess what? Deliverance has a tough running attack, even though oh, it is that tank, Tony that. Pollard. Down. I'm good. One. Well, Mo, he needed this. Yeah, he was just, Joel overcommitted with the user. Nobody left over top, and he has that depleted defense, so those guys aren't fast enough oh, to catch Joel's him. Joel's about to be fun, Joel. Come on, baby. You know so we're tied at seven back. apiece. I talked about the quickest touchdown ever. That might be the quickest we've had two touchdowns ever. 18 seconds into a ball game. Uh oh. Eckler now getting to the second level, and that'll pick up the first it's down. It's going to be a long day if you don't stop that ball guy. Something key, Scott, that you said it's early saying, on is spotting that seven. That Not only guy. did he spot seven, he also spotted a possession because he fumbled the ball. So that, look for that to be key going into this, this, this first half if Joel's able to keep the lead and then get ball back at half. It's a really good point. Being able to start the game off and get that ball at the half, I mean, that's a great remedy to win John Madden football games. Got a second and eight here. Hand it off to Eckler. And he'll tote it to the 45. That's going to bring up a third and four. Joel going to two clock early. I like it, you know. But the one thing with two clock, it does make you play a little impatient. You don't always get your best play out there. But Joel loves to play at this tempo, this high, fast tempo. He wants to take the clock off, but he also wants to play quick. So two clock is a perfect feature for Joel. Look, look at that time. And he'll find a wide open Dante Hall just sitting there, ready to pick up the first down. And you'll notice that when you're playing guys on this high of a level, you play against me online, you can hit me with the, the crosses, the post routes, the corners all day long. These guys will have defense for that, so you have to go deeper into the playbook, mix in those curls and those hitches. I love that route combination right there from Joel. I love, the, I love the progression he was able to go through on that play. It was like the drag was open for a second, Deliverance took away, then the slant started coming over, Deliverance went there, and then that curl on the back end just kind of freed up late. Just a great progression there by Joel. Eckler now, he'll tow it one more time. Way down in plus territory now, ball at the 36. And they're going to move the chains one more time. So a first and 10 now. As the pace has slowed a bit from the first two scores of the game. Five carries, 27 yards now for Joel. 
Not Austin Eckler. He's a 90 overall football outside his 43 cap. Plus, you spend the extra 35 cap to put jukebox on him. So you're spending 78 cap on that guy. You got to get him involved. Luck, look at all this space. And he's going to use his legs. First down on the slide. Going to be close. And it will be a first down. And that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. And that's one thing Joel's always been one of the best at, if not the very best. Just when nothing's there, he's so good at making plays with his quarterback. So that escape artist is a great, great ability for him. At the end of one, 7-7 seven, seven, as we move to quarter number two. And if you're Joel on the offensive side of the ball right now, you can argue that he's got the two most dominant abilities on the offensive side of the ball that we've seen in Madden between the jukebox and the escape artist. Little bubble screen to the outside, Hollywood! Oh, and I was waiting for him to go that bubble because it looks like it's open on that on that side where the nickel's not at because that linebacker's so close to the line of scrimmage, there's no way he can get out and cover that bubble. So that'll bring up a first down at the 11. Goes back to the run. That'll pick up a few. They'll mark him down at the eight. We had two explosive scores on the first two plays of the game. Eckler now. Breaking his way to the end zone. What a drive One stop. there by Joel. Look at One. the intensity of Joel. The number that comes after zero. One stop. You get this guy a sitcom, that was man. A surgical, that was a surgical drive. That was a surgical drive. So 14 to 7. Here comes Dante out of the end zone for deliverance. That's how you really die. He's going to start no the drive bunch. at the 29-yard no. line. But look at this run. Nobody touches him. Look at this stick work right here to avoid Troy P and get back outside for the touchdown. Just a great run there One by stop. Joel. And you notice Joel was moving One. at such a fast Uno. pace, but he had that true clock on. So he took off five minutes of the clock, and you almost don't even realize it because he was moving so fast. And when you're in a situation where you scored to start the game and you get it at half, you do want to shorten that game because you clearly have the advantage. Brilliant. And wow. That looked like a stretch that got blown up before he could even hand it off. The thing I like about Joel, too, is you see some Madden players and they force the passion and it gets them out of their game. And the trash talk, it, they try it, but it's just not for them. I feel it truly does help Joel. He is at his best when he's staying animated, he's staying passionate. And we're seeing that so far. Steve Young gets it to DeMarco. Spin his way to the 37, but it's still going to be third down. Needs two. You know, Deliverance goes to that guy a lot, and you would think that he would spend a little bit more cap because I believe in the last game the guy was open a lot. He's the guy who's looking to get the ball to. I would like to see him spend more cap on that guy. Hands it off to Pollard. He'll pick up the first down. Yeah, he could take it to the two minute warning here if he wishes to do so. And that's what he's going to do, RG. I'm two minute warning. I'm thinking the most point, maybe it's good that it's DeMarco because you're never thinking about him. <laughs> if that's like a goon or somebody, you're like, hey, maybe I got to account. I'm never accounting for DeMarco ever. Kind of sneaks him in there. Little scum tactic. I like it. Deliverance trying to tie things up. Here's the two minute warning, trying by a touchdown. If you just joined us, he fumbled it for six. It was a scoop and score on the opening kickoff of the game, and he nearly got free there as he drags a defender to the 41. I'm personally surprised at how efficient Deliverance's run game has been so far with, you know, no abilities, a tank running back. It's very impressive. It kind of goes back to your point, though. Are you really expecting him to run the ball every play with Tony Pollard when he has him out there? You know, he has that Steve Young with escape bars. He's spending the most cap on him. You kind of expect him to air it out a little bit. It's a good point. He's keeping us off balanced. And Pollard will spin, takes a big hit. Got back to the line of scrimmage. They're actually going to say he lost one. That's going to bring up a second and 11. With a minute 17 to go. I know Joel's an aggressive player, but I don't like seeing that timeout right there. You're up by seven and you're getting the ball at half. Deliverance was almost kind of clocking himself out this half where he wasn't going to be able to get seven points. And here you are helping him, stopping in the clock for him. I just don't really like it. I think you're going to, I think being up a possession and being up points is so big in this Madden. There's no point to force these extra uh, possessions. So two timeouts remaining for Joel. Here on a second and 11, Pollard. 
And mark his knee down at the 36. So here comes a third down with six to go. A little bit of pressure right here on deliverance. He almost kind of has to run the ball. Because if not, if he takes his sack, he's going to be out of field goal range. But running the ball, you don't have a very good chance of picking up the first. So it's a really tough spot because he doesn't want to give Joel the ball back. Third and awkward. Marco across the formation. He will hand it to Pollard. Jukes in the backfield. And now it looks like you're in a situation, Mo, where you got to go for it here on a fourth and eight. Yeah, he can't, he can't make that field goal. And like I was telling you earlier, when you use that left-handed quarterback, you have to hand it off to the left side, or you do, you do get in a position where you can lose yardage handing it off to the right because it is a slower handoff. And now you, you put right yourself here. in a spot where you have to go for it. It's just a really, really tough spot right there. You, you, gotta, right you can't lose yards. I hate to say it, but you got to watch DeMarco right here. Deliverance here on fourth down. Nothing. Young up the seam. Dante oh possession God, at the 12-yard line. First down, Deliverance. I think jo Joel made the mistake right there and actually did watch DeMarco. It went. Paul just playmaker right up that seam for the big first down. Deliverance back in business. Clock on the move. He still has all three timeouts, though. Yeah, Joel aided him a bit. That's exactly what I was talking about. You don't want to see you do that because Deliverance probably would have just punted there. Pollard fall forward to the 10, and he will use his first timeout with 27 seconds to go in the half. Joel CP gets the ball to start the third. So this is a huge... Next couple plays here for Deliverance. Motions to Marco once again here on second and seven. He'll move him back the other way. Plenty of time to get the playoff. And he'll run it. Troy Palomalu. I just baptized him. Literally. He's the Steeler great. Go for Hammers Pollard. Yeah, one, so, no, just baptize him. Joel yeah, the I, Baptist. I did get one. That's respect. I did get one. That's respect. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't fluke you to death. Seen biblical seen drives. drives. I'm not trying to fluke you to death. That was a big hit. Third and eight. Watch the running back wheel here. 23 seconds to go. And that's where he'll go, and a big hit once again. Here comes fourth down. You got to kick it, right, Mom? Yeah, absolutely. Great stick work there by Joe to lay that hit stick. If if Deliverance would have waited maybe another second to a low ball possession, it probably was a Coach touchdown. Coach John Madden himself for that's that seven big, though, for Deliverance to at least get those Thank points because Joel getting that ball in the second I'm half. Now if you're Deliverance, you can at least hold him to three and keep it one possession. It would have been big for Joel if he would have been able to just drive, get three, and make it two possessions to start that second half. Deliverance really kept himself in the ball game, getting some points there before the half. You know, guys, I've seen a lot of guys thank the Madden gods for some gifts. He was thanking Coach John Madden himself for those first seven points of the game. That's a new one. 13 seconds to go, no timeouts. And Deliverance can thank Joel for those three points because if Joel doesn't burn those timeouts, I can promise you Deliverance would have just punted that football and Joel would have been up seven at halftime getting the ball. So, And Madden, sometimes you got to weigh, weigh what's more important. Is it more important to be up by 10 or is it, or is the risk, how much of the risk does that take away? You know, you got to just go up by seven, take the lead. Uh-oh. There's a fumble! Oh, and my And somehow goodness. Joel got it back. That would have been another three points. 3-3. Three, three. Look at that body language. It says it all. Well, what a first half it's been. 14-10. to 10. We've seen a little bit of everything. And we've also heard a lot here in the final. And we got both players wide up here at the club. Good luck, man. Have fun, bro. Come on! Come on, Joel, it's about to be fun, Joel. It's going to be a long day if you don't stop that ball guy. We're going out of fight. Let's go. Now we can play. Now we can play. Uno, the number that comes after zero. That was a surgical drive. Literally. He's a whole new religion after that hit. No fumble. There's that Mark Barron autographed Steelers helmet. That'll be going to the winner. They'll take home $6,500, but more importantly, be representing the Steelers in the round of 32. Gentlemen, coming up December 17th with a chance 
to move their winnings up to 10 grand if they can get a win. I'll tell you one thing. There's no way that if I'm playing in this game and I win that I don't put the helmet on <laughs> after I get the W. I'm just throwing that out there. I got to see it. And for the kids at home, if you're wondering, no, Joel did not stop talking at halftime. He was still talking deliverance through the halftime break, just like just completely locked in right now. He was talking through the talk, the, the talking highlight. <laughs> Eckler once again takes it for four. To say that was three and a half, it'll be a second and seven. And fair to say, guys, this is a momentum drive here, right? I mean, if you're deliverance, if you could force a turnover, a punt, or at least hold them to three, you feel good. And if you're Joel, you really just want that touchdown to make this two possessions. Well, there's my favorite stealer of all time, Ryan Shazier, coming through on a big tackle for loss. Here comes the third and 12, here early in the fourth, excuse me, third quarter. Trying now to get to that fourth down. And just throws it up. Lucky just to be an incomplete pass. I think Joel's defense was playing great. I would like to see a punt here. You don't want to lose yourself the game. Allow your defense to play some play good for you. They've been playing good all game outside of that one big run. I would I would really try to trust them right here. I know it gets tough, but I would I would try to trust them. You haven't been explosive on offense. You've always kind of been a, a dink and duck player. I, I don't I don't really like it. Well he will go for it. Fourth and 12, 351 to go here in the third. Luck, standing tall, here comes the heat, Come it's gonna be a turnover on downs. I'll make adjustments, let's go. Sack them up, second of the game. It's just not easy to pick up those long yardage like it used to be in previous Maddens. It's way more difficult, and it's much easier to play defense, so just kind of trusting your defense. Well, an opportunity for deliverance, and the Red Sea will doing, part, man? and all of a sudden, relax, he's relax, got relax. the lead. How about the resilience of Michael Pinta? You start off the game, hit stick, fumble for six the other way. It's looking as grim as can be, and he just continues to fight, plays defense to start the second half, and responds back with a touchdown. He's showing why right now, why he's the two-time defending champ going for the three-time. So that'll put him up by three. And no, that's not Eric Dickerson as he'll take it to the 24-yard line. Look at this, untouched. It looked like Joe might have run commit middle and he ran a stretch outside. So that's just never going to work out too well for you. Just like that, deliverance with the momentum. And now Joel's got to be the one to answer. Only 3.7 yards per carry, RG. Yeah, and Joel in this unique, you don't see a lot of people running gun doubles halfback week. I think he's the first person I've seen all year running this offense on a very high level. He needs to get it back in rhythm, though. That bubble was where he was getting most of his yards, it felt like, last game. Some of those cheap yards where you don't got to sit and make a, a crazy read. You want to just hike, throw, get on your horse. Second and nine. Luck. Sack him up. Third time, Lawrence Taylor, the legends, defense. got there. It looked like he had a post coming wide open, but he just wasn't comfortable in the pocket and just missed it just by a hair. Seen it a little bit late, wasn't able to get it out. He had the wheel route early, too, to Eckler. Big third down. Luck. I had him oh my open. Goodness. Oh, my God. It's a sack fest. I had him open. And it's a fourth and forever. And he's got to punt it away. Right I like the punt here, though. Give yourself a chance. Sometimes it's really easy to just get in that habit of going for it on fourth down. Give yourself a chance. Dante, room to return. Oh. Works his way up the sideline and pushed out of bounds at the 39. That's where the drive will start for deliverance. If you're deliverance, I feel like you have to go back to the run right here. Joel has obviously had trouble stopping you out about out this single back wing flex. Let's go now. You got to just continue to feed Pollard. Little tight end bunch, Sirius Mo, RG. Scott Cole with you here in the final. Of the Pittsburgh Steelers club champion. Will it be Deliverance? Will it be Joel? Be his first time ever moving on to the round of 32. I'd run stretch left here every time. And Pollard just running free. 
And he'll get it down within the five yard line. They'll mark him down at the four. Mo, I, I got to ask. I mean, obviously, the stretch left is the move. Why stretch left every time right there? Because Joel was having his nickel on the left side of the field, but he moved him to the right on that play. It was just so obvious that, no, that he just had way more numbers out there to block. It, there was almost nobody to block. You know, they were looking for people to block up the field. There was just nobody there, so it was just a wide open lane for the running back. If that wasn't Pat Tillman, gentlemen, that would have been another touchdown. And he would put him up two scores. This is a big four yards. First and goal. Yeah, you, you can't state that enough, Scott. These four yards are super important. If you're Joel, if you ever had a hold on moment in you, this is it. And we got a timeout. It's going to be deliverance. Got two timeouts remaining. So we'll line it up again, first and goal. We'll see if that timeout comes back to bite him. DeMarco will move to the left side. High formation. Hands it off to Pollard, and he's going to lose a yard. And this really is a big set of downs. You know, this game's either going to be a one possession game in the fourth quarter with Joel with the chance to completely control the game and go win himself the game, or he's going to be down two possessions where it almost feels impossible to win the game. This is a huge set of downs right here. 25 seconds left here in the third. Second and goal now. He's going to have to reset the play. Look for him to motion him over again, though, and run stretch to the left. Stretch is where he's had his success. The dive's been blown up. Most of the yards have come from the stretch. Joel got on that right safety, though. It should get stopped. And Pollard can't get away from Troy Palomalu. And we're headed to the fourth quarter. 17-14. Play of the game thus far coming up. This is the hold or moment right here. He's going to go back to that running back wheel where I almost guarantee if he doesn't run the ball here, the running back's the only guy you got to watch. Fours in the air. As we hit a third and goal from the seven. He's done nothing but lost yards. Nothing. Got the drag. He missed him. He's got to run with Young. This is where people make mistakes. And he works his way to the left. Going with Vincent! Steve oh, Young will take it in for the score! That's why we pay the cap! Now I Deliverance get to play Deliverance goes up! By nine a with a chance to make it ten! What a replay for the ages. That might have been a $6,500 scramble for the Pittsburgh Knights. Oh, Michael Pinter, a.k.a. Deliverance, sits back in the pocket with Young. The play breaks down. He gets outside the numbers, life on the line, and makes it two possessions. Oh, that was huge. Remember, this is the first play of the quarter, Mo, and it takes about 16 seconds yeah, for him to get in there. You got to force your opponent to make a pass right there. You can't let him scramble with that escape artist, and that's what happened. The play broke down. It looked like he sent the spot a little bit early, and that's why he was able to run with Steve Young. It was a 12-second play. And oh, Luck is running wild. Able to hold on to the ball, and here comes a no huddle, folks. If you're Joel, you got to just calm down. You're still in the game. You've got to score on this drive. Don't don't force yourself into making a turnover. Andrew Luck. No, why was that the And he just throws it right to Deion Sanders. And he yeah, might have also go. thrown the championship why away. It's going to be first and 10 at the 44 after the pick. Game. That's all on me. He played a better game than me, and he deserves to win this game, honestly. They're going to be real, let's see. And it, Joel's, you know, talking about if you're gonna be real, deliverance playing a better game. He deserves to win the game. Ah, That's it, all it, cool it, and all. It, but this it, game it, ain't it, over. You got three timeouts. Man, You're I'm only down well, 10. I, I really you hold them to three right here. You can score two touchdowns. I don't like the attitude of Joel right now. You need to stay grimy. You need to stay in it. And you got to keep on fighting. You work too hard to throw in the towel this early. And you could kind of tell by that first play of that last drive where he ran with young or with luck. It was almost as if he was he was giving up. You know what I mean? Like he's just going to take a hit with his quarterback and fumble the ball just because he didn't get a stop on third and goal. You got to keep playing the game. It's like he just gave up immediately. You got to keep playing the game. You're, there's always going to be another chance. You don't know when your when your big play is going to come. You read my mind, Mo. Like is it a first and ten from the thirty? And oh. Pollard takes a big hit. Oh, you are. That's respect. That's respect. 
conservative. Your deliverance there saying I'm unconservative. Yeah, and for those that don't know, conservative is a coaching adjustment. You can put your ball carry on, and it, it makes it so you can't do any spins, jukes, or any special moves, but it significantly reduces your fumble chance, and good thing he had it on conservative, because right, that user hit stick Palomalu would have had a good chance to force a fumble and had Mo, it been. That was a huge change of momentum there because he snapped the ball too early. Yeah, he snapped the ball too early. He really gave Joel another chance in this game, just a new life because he could have snapped the ball where Joel would have had to burn a timeout with two minutes left, but now Joel's going to get a free free chance at a stop and be able to conserve all three of those timeouts. If you look, that, that 17 is ticking right before the 16 on the other side. He's got to snap the ball here before the two-minute warning. Snapped it with five seconds remaining. And that's the difference between the timeout getting burned or not. Go! It doesn't matter to run this thing down. You got to run a play. And Pollard will go nowhere. And he holds him to a field goal opportunity. It's going to be a 44 yard attempt. That's a huge, huge stop right there for Joel. With all three timeouts intact, if you could put together a good score and drive right here, you could regain momentum, put some pressure on deliverance, and give yourself a chance. But it starts with this drive. If you're Joel, you need to go down, and you need to go get yourself six. Dickerson takes it from the 15. And he'll work his way to the 26, and that's where the drive will begin. I'll be honest. If you want to have a chance in this game, it's not a drive. It's not a good drive. It's a one-play touchdown. You have to go to. You have to get a one-play touchdown, or it's going to be nearly impossible. You need to put together your drive under two minutes. You know, it's way. It's really unrealistic to to think that you're going to be able to get a one-play touchdown when your opponent knows you have no timeouts. When you have all three of these timeouts, he's still forced to play defense a little bit. You need the one-play touchdown right here. Timeout by Deliverance. He has one remaining now. First down. He'll Without give it to Hollywood. And Hollywood will get out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Clock will stop. Yeah, 146 to go. It's not a one-play touchdown. That's not bad. As long as you can get yards in big chunks and then get out of bounds to stop that clock, you have to preserve all three timeouts if you're Joel, though. Needs two scores, two touchdowns. Great get reason. back in it. And that is a great wheel route all the way down to the 38. And he will hurry up. That'll cost him 11 seconds. Quick hike them. He's got him on his DT. Unfortunately, it's Lawrence Taylor. And he'll just throw it away. 118 to go now. That's fine for Joel, though. You've got into a situation where you can manage. If you're able to get in before maybe 55 seconds, you give yourself a realistic chance. Any less than that, I think you got to go for an onside. Luck gets free, throws across his body into the end zone. Oh, and it'll save. fall to the turf. I set my feet right there. That was a, a battle, a jump I mean, ball of the Madden down. budget ballers and Pruitt and Apke Let's go. on the jump ball. Third down now. Luck. And he will go for the first down to Dickerson. I would burn a timeout here. You got to burn one. This is, a, this is an issue a lot of players have managing the clock in this situation. You're not going to have enough time where you, you're able to kick it deep anyways. Just just burn the timeout. And it's picked up by Troy Apke. And he'll bring it out to the 26-yard line, and that should do it. Big play from Deliverance. It looked like he had the seam on the right side of the field. Instead, he goes to the left, and Deliverance is going to get the pick to secure the ball and become the third three-time club champion. He's waving that terrible towel, and you know what, Deliverance, you should because you deserve it. The only three players have won a three-peat with their teams. He's got the Mark Barron autograph helmet, and remember, you can throw a fourth guy in there. Drini won it three times with three different clubs. So only four players have won at least three club championships. But your final score, 27 to 14, Deliverance.